Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about tumors of the retinal pigment epithelium. First, let us discuss about congenital hypertrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium. It is abbreviated as CHRP. There are three types of CHRP. They are solitary or unifocal CHRP, multifocal CHRP and atypical CHRP. First, let us discuss about solitary or unifocal CHRP. It usually presents as flat, dark grey, round lesion with well-defined margins as you can see in this picture. It can be located near equator or in peripheral fundus. There can be a depigmented halo located just inside the margin and there can be depigmented lacunae as you can see in this picture. Some lesions may become totally depigmented. This picture shows depigmented CHRP. The median diameter of a solitary CHRP is 4 to 5 mm. Now let us discuss about the histopathology of a solitary CHRP. There will be densely packed RPE cells with large melanosomes. There will be a combination of cellular hyperplasia and hypertrophy. Management of solitary CHRP is with long term review. This picture shows a peripapillary solitary congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium. Now let us discuss about grouped or multifocal CHRP. There will be multiple lesions much smaller than those of solitary CHRP and without halos or lacunae. They will be oriented in a pattern simulating animal footprints. They are also called as bat tracks. This picture shows group or multifocal CHRP. As you can see, they resemble bat tracks. There can be several groups and they can be rarely depigmented. In this case, they are called as polar bat tracks, as you can see in this picture. In group or multifocal CHRP, only one eye is involved. This is helpful in differentiating multifocal CHRP from atypical CHRP. Now let us discuss about atypical CHRP. In this case, there will be multiple oval, spindle, comma or fishtail shaped lesions of variable size as you can see in this picture. It is associated with irregularly hypopigmented margins and perilesional areas. In atypical CHRP, both eyes are involved. Haphazard distribution and they can be pigmented, depigmented or there can be heterogeneous pigmentation. This picture shows atypical CHRP with depigmentation at the margins. Atypical CHRP are also known as retinal pigment epithelial hematomas associated with familial adenomatous polyposis, that is RPEH FAP. This is because 70% of the cases of familial adenomatous polyposis are associated with atypical CHRP. Atypical CHRP can also be seen in Gardner syndrome. In this case, there will be familial adenomatous polyposis, osteomas of skull, mandible, and long bones, and there can be cutaneous soft tissue tumors. They are also associated with Turcot syndrome. In this case, there will be FAP and tumors of CNS. Now let us discuss about combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium. It is a large lesion. It is usually congenital and it usually affects males. It can occur sporadically in normal individuals or it can be associated with neurofibromatosis type 2. Histopathology of combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium shows thickening of retinal pigment epithelium and sensory retina with prominent glial and vascular tissue. The symptoms of combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium include decreased vision or stubbiness in early childhood. Now let us discuss about the fundus findings in a case of combined hematoma of retina and RP. There will be slightly elevated deep grey or brown pigmented lesion that blends into adjacent RP at its margins as you can see in this picture. There can be superficial whitish ERM formation with retinal wrinkling as you can see in this picture. There can be vitreoretinal interface changes with focal tractional retinal detachment. There can be tortuosity and prominence of overlying retinal vessels with evidence of feeder and draining vessels. The lesion is usually located at the posterior pole often in a juxtapapillary or macular site. There can be dragging of disc or macula. These are fundus images of combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium. Now let us discuss about the investigations done for a case of combined hematoma. OCT can show epiretinal membrane formation. Fundus fluorescence angiography can show early hyperfluorescence of vascular abnormalities and blockage by pigment and late phase ratio leakage. This picture shows combined hematoma and this is the FA picture of the same. Treatment of combined hematoma involves monitoring for complications, amblyopath therapy and we can give specific treatment for CNV and leakage. Vitrectomy can be done for epiretinal membrane. Now let us discuss about congenital simple hematoma of retinal pigment epithelium. It is a rare condition 
It is usually incidentally diagnosed in asymptomatic children and young adults. It presents as small, that is less than or equal to 1.5 mm jet black nodal lesion with well-defined margins, as you can see in this picture. It appears to involve the full thickness of retina and retinal pigment epithelium, and it appears to protrude into the vitreous cavity. It is usually associated with a feeding artery and a draining vein. It is usually located immediately adjacent to foveola, and the visual acuity is usually normal. Now let us discuss about adenoma and adenocarcinoma of retinal pigment epithelium. They usually present as oval pigmented lesion in the peripheral fundus. They can be associated with vitreous inflammatory cells and retinal exudation. They can be associated with prominent feeding and draining vessels. Diagnosis of adenoma and adenocarcinoma of retinal pigment epithelium can be done by fine detail aspiration cytology and treatment is by observation. There can be hyperplasia and migration of the retinal pigment epithelium which can simulate uveal melanoma. These are fundus pictures of adenoma and adenocarcinoma of the retinal pigment epithelium. Thank you.